Hello YouTube, today I'll be showing you how to create a Minecraft server using the MinOS user interface and this project on SourceForge called GM36 Prebuilt -pre Servers. You need to have the MinOS user interface accessible and already configured for access and also be able to connect to your server for file access. I won't be showing how to do that but I'll be showing you how to get a server running. The first thing you need to do is in Google type in jmontana36 sourceforge and it should be the top link. The file you are downloading has to be a zip file being that you'll be uploading it to the interface. By default, when you're running on Windows, it'll be a zip file, so you don't just click download. You have to actually browse through the files to find the zip file yourself. It's not that hard, it's simple. So there was an update 10 minutes ago or less. So when you when you download this, since it's a new file, Chrome might say that it's not commonly downloaded. So it so basically they haven't scanned the file or anything to make sure it's it's harmless. So when you're finished downloading you might have to click on the arrow here and click on keep. like this but once you have the file downloaded you need to upload it to the server I recommend using WinSCP others might be using this other one called FileZilla but WinSCP is, is preferred for me it's under VAR Games, Minecraft, Import. So what you do is you drag it to upload and as you can see I have two other versions here because I was going to create a tutorial before but I decided not to. I'll remove these two just so it doesn't confuse you guys when I show you the UI. So what you do now is log into the UI. The address might vary depending on what you what your IP settings are. So create server from archive. And then I'll be naming the server test. So what what you do is you name you name the server what you want it to be named. And once selected, you need to go to the server config. Change max RAM to to whatever value you'd like there. I'll be using 512. On reboot, the start is anytime the server starts up, well anytime the system starts up, the server will start. The restart interval, interval is when you want the server to restart after a specific amount of time. The archive for for creating tar.gz files of the server. 
and backups for regular backups. Once done, you you may optionally go to server dot properties and change any of the settings here that you would want. For example, the world name. The world name is changeable if you upload your own world name and you haven't renamed the world folder to world. Put allow nether if you like the nether. Change the, the maximum view distance that the server will send to clients. A permission level I recommend leaving as zero. The idle timeout it kicks you after not being after being AFK too long, etc. So what so the the next thing before you start the server go to manage profiles create create a custom profile and name it JM36. Change the type to unmanaged and the jar file to run JM36.jar. Once you have that, go back to server and you should be able to start it. So the first startup will take a while since it's generating the world. It also, as you can see, was downloading a database. So the first startup will always take longer than the regular a regular startup. So the first startup for here was 37 seconds. The web UI doesn't auto refresh so I just constantly click on console for it to refresh. This time it took 13 seconds to start. And it also used less memory. See, although, although it comes with all these plugins, it has in, it says maximum memory 455 megabytes allocated 312 and free 237 so although it has all of that it has barely it barely uses any memory if you add more memory it'll allocate more but still have a lot of free memory 
but you, the the less memory you al allocate, it compresses. It doesn't doesn't cause any performance loss though. So if you'd like to add more plugins, browse to ser go back, browse to servers, and go to the server name. Ignore these files. You you could actually delete these. These only work if you were installing and setting up on Windows. You may optionally read the README file here. which explains about the permission system but when you first do it do slash pex user your username group add owner So you do that, add, add yourself as owner, and for any other, any other people, by default, will join as member, member. You, you may use VIP, where it says group, right here, put VIP to assign someone as VIP, T staff for minus staff. Staff for like regular staff. Regular staff is basically like moderator. Head staff is more of admin. In the next update, the the names should be changed. But as of right now, this is how it is. And for Windows and everything else. I'll be showing how to do that another time. If you need any help or have any questions, you can email. Or you can also create a thread on the forums on the site. The website is jm36.tk. If it doesn't load, you type in jmontana36.tk. And if that also doesn't load, then go to Google and search it. The provider of the domain has a bunch of bugs. That's, that's the only reason they go down. But just search... ...should be the first... The first link. So it also comes with optional plugins. This one you'd be using if you have a world like say parkour and it has these dispensers that run out. So once once someone finishes the parkour and leaves the world, the this the world would basically reset and the dispensers would be full again. If you want if, if you want to set up automated messages to be broadcasted, you would use this. Creative Plots. Just drag the jar file into plugins. These are all the plugins it comes with.
and this is the work for folder it, it generated once that's done you should have a working server You notice a lot of different differences within some of the plugins. Like for example, using World that it won't cause as much lag as it generally does, especially with huge amounts of changes. It'll instead regenerate in a more in a slower way. Not not necessarily slow. It just won't it, it'll just cause less lag on the server basically but you may allocate any any amount of RAM as long as your system has enough the amount of RAM that you allocate depends on the system for example if you want to dedicate all the RAM to that server you you take away 256 megabytes away from it and then set that amount so if you had a, if you had a gigabyte aka 1024 megabytes